You don't like StarCraft much, though, from a multiplayer perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's very macro-heavy. StarCraft is a game you have to spend a lot of time just figuring out how to make your muscles work the right way. <laughs> Dwarfheim. I have not. I'll look into it, though. I'll make a note to it here. I'll, I'll even write it down. Dwarfheim. Also, uh, Fear Dragon, the StarCraft guy, just posted an RTS that someone's working on as well. It looks more like a traditional RTS, but we'll see. All right, here we go. A 3v3 match here to start us off before Friday Night Fights. On the red team, we've got the submitter of this replay, Echo Tech, as the Tech Marine Crisis, as the Ravener Alpha, Jafari Makumba as the Chaos Lord. They are fighting against, on the blue side, Kasuga as the Inquisitor, overtly generous as the Apothecary, and Peloku, or Peluko, with a bunch of X's around his name, like it's still 1998, as the Lord General. All right, so, uh, this is a 3v3. We actually haven't, do we haven't actually cast many 3v3s, but this is exciting. It's also exciting that we're in a replay and we're not in observer mode because look how nice the frame rate is. Normally when we're playing observer mode, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty dicey when we're doing these big 3v3 matches, but I'm glad that we can actually enjoy this 3v3 without a whole lot of chop here. So we've got two Imperial Guard members on the blue team, so uh, early game might be a little tricky. Well, I guess it, it's, it's, it's debatable, right? So early on, they have the Sentinel, which is really difficult to deal with. They have all the Guardsmen. You have, and when you have the Lord General, you can actually heal the Guardsmen and repair the Sentinel. It makes them really difficult to get off the map if you can't burst them down early. Uh, same thing up top, really. We uh, we have the Apothecary even, so the Apothecary can even keep the Guardsmen safe. So we have, we have, uh, I don't know. It's it's going to be a tough fight from the start. But the Nids, the Nids should be able to do something about this too. Crisis loves the Spore Mines. Spore Mines are coming up on the north side. Looking for a chance to get in on these Guardsmen. Look, see, they spot the Guardsmen. They start moving forward right away. The guard's been trying to gun them down. Maybe a stomp comes in, but they dodge it. They're very spread out, though, so he can't risk detonating them right now. There we go. One gets detonated. It looks like they might get a second. If the second goes down, no. Didn't quite get the second. If the second had detonated there, that would have been a huge loss for the Imperial Guard. He probably would have just had it to retreat both of those spots right there. Apothecary gets forced off, and it looks like the red team will manage to push off the blues for the time being on the north. Meanwhile, on the south, though, the blue team has been victorious, takes the contested points, and is actually threatening the other victory point. Of course, on this map, there's one victory point up top, two on the south. So as the game progresses, you'll kind of see things usually transfer a bit from fighting hard for the contested stuff up north to fighting on the south. The thing with this map is that all, kind of all the important early game stuff is up top. If you push the north, you can see this gen farm is pretty well exposed on both sides, and there's a contested gen farm up with a contested VP as well. Sentinel getting very low right now as our, uh, effectively our hero, Echo Tech, uh, manages, manages to push them just far enough back to not really get anything done. So they take, they take everything else, they threaten the Sentinel, they threaten the gen farm, they take out a gen, but that's a bit uh, about all they get done. Not a bad start, but not really. The problem is now it's a long retreat back home. It gives the blue team time to rally their forces and get back onto everything. So the generator is online. A lot of explosions going down. Mr. Chouse scaring off the Lord General. Now uh, we have gens, gens. Gen All right, so everybody's just about full up on generators. Contested farm up here for the blue team. Also dropping some gens down there. The blues actually hold both of the contested gen farms, which is uh, rather significant, especially once they start dropping extra gens. And it comes about 20 ahead for the blue team over the uh, over the reds. So the generator is online. Crisis going for uh, not the usual Ravener spam build, for, but double termagons and a warrior out here. A heavy weapon team coming out here for Paluco as well. And the VPs are 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 against uh, against the red team right now. 
not by a lot, but uh, they're, they're going to be able to take back the center point here for just a moment. The good thing about the Ravener, the Ravener doesn't have any tunnels set up down south, but uh, Crisis is usually very good at supporting both sides of a fight. He'll normally, he'll normally support one ally, then hop in a tunnel, pop out the other side, and support over there as well. Overtly Gemrus and, and Echo Tech still with just a single tax squad. This is a very, very light tier one so far from those guys. Echo Tech has upgraded to the Mastercraft Defaulter and the Artificer's Armor, so it makes, uh, makes the techie a lot more durable on the field. Makes him able to put out some pretty serious range DPS against infantry as well. Double LAS cannon turrets, or multi LAS turrets over here to defend the gen farm of the blues. So making sure there's no way that the tech marine and the Ravener are able to push in on the gen farm. So a little bit of an investment on the defensive play there, but it might work out considering uh, that they're already ahead on power. So that they just make sure they don't get gen back. We can see Kasuga's already heading into tier two and uh, the reds are just nowhere close so if Kasuga can get an early chimera or something like that out uh, that would be significant both of the sentinels have gone down already so that's uh that's kind of a problem here so far and it looks like see this is what i'm talking about uh, christ is dropping those tunnels suddenly nids pop up way behind the enemy line over here and start pressuring the gem farm manages to get uh, a couple generators down might get all three not sure about that uh the red team is still mostly off the map and kind of rallying and getting back out on the field heavy weapon team does get a nice setup on the tyranid army raveners do counter but it looks like the ravener alpha is going to pay for his uh overly brazen attack here Manages to take out three generators at the cost of the Ravener. That's probably still worth it. He lost a couple warriors as well, I think, though, so maybe not in the long run. 446 to 407 as the entire blue team starts working their way into Tier 2. The Reds have taken one of the contested points back, though. They should be able to catch back up here. Chaos Lord out here as well with his Combi Flamer. Uh, not a lot of upgrades, I think. Oh, no, there we go. The Apothecary is actually upgraded. Upgraded with a... Storm Bolter and the Purification Rites, pretty standard build for the Apothecary, especially in team games. You kind of want to keep him in range, keep him out of the front of the fight. And with this, uh, not a Chimera, but a Bane Wolf now coming out onto the field, looking to melt down some power and maybe some scouts and tacks along with it. So the Chimera starts burning down generators, or melting them down, since it's a chemical weapon, not a flame weapon. Banewolf gets called out by the Reds, and a uh, overtly Gemrus going for a Plasma Devastator for his first purchase? Where's all his power going? He's got, he's got a Sarge coming out. Flamers are up top, trying to take back the power. Gens do go down to the Banewolf in, in the northernmost gen farm there. Excruciator's coming down, stopping the scouts from actually kiting around. That does force them off. Not often you see the Excruciators use their pinning down scouts, but uh, actually quite effective at making sure they can't just kite around and be a nuisance. Managing to drop the hammer on attack model there. It looks like uh, Echo Tech's trying to do what he can. Echo Tech, you need to get, look at these. Look at this requisition. You got a thousand requisition. You gotta get a squad onto the field, man. Even if it's just another squad of tactics, get something out there. The Banewolf continues its reign of terror, now moving on to the second gen farm over here. It looks like the Ravener will be able to return the gen bash, but it's a full gen bash on both farms right now from the Banewolf. So far, completely unanswered. Overtly Gemerous. Where did, where's that Plasma Devastator? What? Just just keeping an eye on the on the contested VP. And the Banewolf's just going to check out what's happening in the base. I don't know if this is a good idea. But maybe taking out some Ravener tunnels and that sort of thing might be all right. But there is a rocket launcher, or missile launcher rather, out now for the tactical marines. Message received. And uh, man, the red team is just pretty power starved right now. They've got nothing. They got a whole lot of nothing. That said, they are going to return the Gen Bash over here. Noise marines moving up with Mr. Chouse and a couple of squads of Chaos Space Marines, but uh. The heavy weapon crew does manage to get clear of all the scuffle and get set back up. The last cannon turrets are going to go down over here, and it looks like the Ravener is going to get another gen bash. So 
It's looking like this is going to be a long game. No one's going to be teching up super fast. Uh, Echo Tech with a couple squads attacks now. Uh, Kasuga with just the two guardsmen and the Bane Wolf. So without the Chimera, this guardsmen, these guardsmen are getting uh, teched up pretty well. They do have their plasma. They got their commissars. So they're a, fully, a pair of fully upgraded squads. But still doesn't have a lot of staying power. Not without the Chimera. The Bane Wolf is nice, but you want to be able to reinforce on the field. Paluco with a much more formidable looking uh, tier 2 Imperial Guard army. Paluco over here with the Lord General, with Catechins, with Stormtroopers, a heavy weapons team. I still want to see a Chimera from one of these guys, but Paluco is at least making sure he has a formidable army. Alright, and as we kind of head into the mid game here, there's a bit of a lull while both sides are kind of just kind of get, get, getting themselves back together. Both sides were all playing very reactionarily, running around the map, trying to defend their power from all of these various threats that were out on the field. The Bane Wolf, the tunneling Tyranids, all that kind of nasty stuff. More Raveners hit the field. Wait, is this, is this three squads of Raveners right now? Oh, a nice looking Hell Fury Strike comes down right in the middle of that Tyranid blob. And the Bane Wolf actually had them quite slow, so they can't get out of there very well either. That was a huge, I mean, what a great use of the Hell Fury Strike. Sometimes those things aren't very impactful, but the way it worked right there, it just kind of shut down the entire Tyranid advance. That said, there's still a squad of Ravners and a couple Warrior squads out here as well. Warriors are getting quite low, so they have to be careful. There's a lot of Plasma Guardians, or sorry, Plasma Guardsmen out here. And the Inquisitor with the Crossbow, Bolt Pistol, and the Excruciators. There's, kinda, there's a lot of potential lockdown from that. Inquisitor right now, really going to limit the movement of their opponents. Imperial Guard dropping a bunker right into the thick of it. Bane Wolf coming in again for yet another Gen Bash. The Apothecary holding strong against the force of the Tech Marine. The Plasma Devastator trying to do what it can to get out of there, but uh, ultimately the attacks do have to retreat. The Plasma Devil stay on the field. There's scouts, a Tech Marine, and Tactical Marine still up top. Meanwhile, on the south side of the map, it looks like the Lord General has managed to push the Chaos Lord back uh, to his own victory point. Stormtroopers with the Assault Kit out here. Uh, still no med kits for the Lord General. I'd really like to see that if there's no Chimera. I want to see something that'll keep these Guardsmen squads on the field. The Catechins are out here, but they're not really fighting anything. And it looks like the blue team is going to hold strong over here, but it might be at the cost of a Plasma Devastator. The high-powered shot almost takes that support artillery squad out, but it manages to get away just in the nick of time. Meanwhile, speaking of artillery support, oh my gosh, the Blastmaster misses the shot. I thought that was going to be a bunch of dead guardsmen, but unfortunately, uh, it seems to not be able to quite connect. Again, it hits a wreck in the middle of the map. Creeping Barrage comes down, doing a little bit of damage there. It's more about the knockback than the damage from Creeping Barrage. And it looks like the Lord General uh, hitting the move, move, move. Oh my gosh, was that a dead squad? I don't think it was. It might have been. I think that may just be a squad down. Let the galaxy burn! Ripping apart the Stormtroopers, melting down infantry left and right. Oh my gosh, this game is not going to be over anytime soon. 331 to 345. Lord General standing obstinately in front of the face of the Chaos Lord, trying to decap right there. Chaos Lord puts an end to that, but there is a heavy weapons team, and all there is is two squads of Chaos Space Marines. That's not really what you want to fight a setup team. Meanwhile, we come up top. Apothecary gets a heal down just in the nick of time to save himself from certain doom from a pair of Raveners and a Ravener Alpha. Tech Marine moving back up. But uh, without the support of his allies, you might want to fall back here. Uh, this is this is kind of a classic thing I see in threes games a lot, is that players will kind of move in independently of one another. Whereas the Ravner just fell out, and the Tech Marine is moving forward, you kind of want to time those pushes together. Oh my gosh, so many tack going down here. The Inquisitor. Doing huge damage, locking down these squads and allowing for these uh, Stormtrooper grenades to hit their targets consistently. is a really nice combination. Noise Marines moving up. Tuga now with uh, two squads of Stormtroopers. Echo Tech still with just the two TAC squads. 
Would really like to see some more tier two tech on the field from some of these guys because the blue team's heading into tier three. And if you don't have any tier two tech when the tier three hits, you're gonna be in for a pretty bad time. The turret gets burned down up north, allowing the blues to take back their, uh, their gen farm finally. Interspatial, thank you for the tier one sub. Much appreciated, my friend. Is this Iron Harvest 40K? Yeah, man. Dude, if you guys are playing Iron Harvest and you haven't played this game, it's, it's, dude, it's awesome. It's so good and you should be playing it. There's going to be some mechs and stuff coming onto the field later, I bet you. All right, overtly, Gemrus already has some tactical, or sorry, some deep strike terminators on the field. So this is going to get really nasty here shortly. Plasma Devastator blasting away, connects with the retreating Space Marines, but uh, doesn't manage to take them out. Meanwhile, the Nids are on the flank completely, catching out all of these Guardsmen and uh, the Banewolf potentially as well. I can't believe the Banewolf's still on the field, but it's getting some work done. Overtly, Jembrus needs to be careful with his positioning. These Terminators, of course, cannot retreat, but uh, they're in the thick of it, and they're looking to rip apart those Adrenal Gland words. If he can get one of these to pop and get a Synapse Bomb going down, that could be huge, but of course, the, the improved healing right here, this AoE heal over time from the Apothecary, from that army of the Apothecary, and such a huge war gear in three on three maps when uh, teams seem to be blobbed together. Venom Cannon having a lot of trouble getting anything done on the far side. It looks like the Bane Wolf managed to trump those guys. And now the artillery barrage comes in, nails those stormtroopers, turns one into bits. Of course, the uh, dubstep cannon from the Noise Marines causing a lot of trouble here for the Imperial Guard forces. Standing on the high ground, but is that going to be enough? I've got the high ground, says the Lord General, but I don't think that the Chaos Lord cares. Where's the Let the Galaxy Burn? It must be on cooldown or something. I, thought, I was expecting it to come in right on that infantry blob over here. Aspiring Champion going home. Are they going to make it? No, they do not. That's a squad down for Mr. Chouse. But still, there's just not enough to stop the Chaos push. The Chaos Space Marines are too beefy, and along with Mr. Chouse, uh, still sitting at about half his HP despite all of that. And surprise, Raveners in the retreat path ripping through the retreating Imperial Guards. They managed to take out one squad. Will they get another? Oh my gosh, the health goes down so fast. The Catachin's in a lot of trouble. It looks like they will manage to get home, not before taking quite a few losses, though. Four Catachins go down on retreat. A nasty-looking flank there from Crisis. Kasuka has a Lehman Rust tank coming out on the field here shortly. But again, just bash, gen bash after gen bash. Let the galaxy burn goes down, not allowing. They, they are sick of this Lord General. They say, go home and stay home. Oh my gosh, that grenade that just came in, though. Doing huge damage. The warriors start falling. The Synapse bombs are going off. Is it going to be enough to rout the Tyranid forces completely? The Gene Stealers are so nasty. Yeah, they just keep trucking through. The Plague Marines are getting some slows down on this Bane Wolf, but is it going to be enough? One or two more shots might buy the time needed for these Tyranids to close the gap, but it looks like for the time being it's going to continue falling back and get at least a relative safety of its base. It's level four. How often do you get to see a level four Bane Wolf? And now not only that, but there's a Lehman Rust tank, one of the biggest, baddest tanks in the game here to uh, to continue that blue push back out onto the map. 303 to 249. And this map, this, this game can still go any direction. Everybody's moving into tier three. Paluco with the Bane Blade coming out here shortly. Crisis heading into tier three as well. So we're gonna have some big nasty bugs coming out on the field. Some Carnifexes, some Lictors, you name it. Tier three, the sky's the limit. The Brood will be unleashed. And Crisis has already shown how nasty he can be with it. He may have overstayed his welcome a little bit there because it looked like he lost a couple squads after taking some out of the Imperial Guard. Oh my gosh, these Terminators tearing through one of those tactical marine squads. You've got to be so careful with your retreats when you have these big mean squads in your retreat path. Something to be very aware of in three on three matches. Where are your enemies? Because the one you are fighting might have another one on your flank. And the VPs are, sh I mean, completely even right now. We're deep into this match and the VPs are still even up. This game is uh, definitely going the distance. 
All right, so uh, let's see what we've got. We've got a lot of resources starting to stack up here. Jafar really needs to kind of bolster his troops. He's sitting on so much. He oh my gosh, the float is ridiculous. Jafar, buy something, buy anything. You've got to get on the field and support your allies here, man. There may be more gens bashed in this game than I've seen in the past, like, week of three-on-three -three games. Oh my gosh. What are these even repairing? Oh, they're putting up a last turret. Okay. I thought they were repairing the bunker. I was like, why is the health, why is the health not going up? I was very confused there. Don't mind me. Just a little, just a little caster confusion there. Pretty classic in this game because there's always so much going on, let alone being in a 3v3 game. Here comes the Bane Blade. Oh my gosh. This tank is a monster bristling with weaponry. It's got las cannons, it's got auto bolters, it's got a great big demolisher in the front too. If that thing closes the distance, we're gonna see it here in just a second, watch. As soon as he closes the distance with that nib. Oh, it's a little delayed. I was hoping it was gonna connect with the demolisher. Big whiff over there. But the, the Inquisitor's forces now coming in on the other side. The Bane Wolf, you can't repair and back up. You have to, repairing, we talked about this the other day, repairing units have pathing priority, so you don't want your repairing squad to be behind your vehicle, because then it can't fall back. Improvised explosive goes down, doesn't really connect with anything, but uh... Where where did the nids end up going? Did they just hop in a tunnel and get out of there? No, here they are, they're over here. They made the long trek around. 240 to 168, it's a triple cap for the blues here, suddenly. Things are looking dicey for the red team. The red team just doesn't have that much. Jafari does have a great and clean one coming out, but his, his army is otherwise quite small, and a great and clean one on its own is not going to stand up against a Lehman Rust tank, a Bane Blade, and a whole lot of Plasma Guardsmen. All right, we have another call. Is this going to be more Terminators? This first squad was pretty early. It is, oh my gosh, two squads of Terminators now for this apothecary. Gene Stealers don't stand a chance. Even these Ravener Alpha with his Acid Splatter and Synapse Zara cannot stand. We need some Plasma. We need some melting down of this super heavy infantry. The Terminators teleport back. The red team does take the contested VP because the blues are entirely invested in the bottom of the map right now. The Apoth carry and both Imperial Guard forces are all down here. They even drop a bunker, so they're going to they're going to lock this down. multi last turret comes down, bunker comes down. Look at this rocket barrage! It's just ridiculous! The damage going out right now is crazy for the Imperial Guard. The Great Unclean one is here, but with the Executioner Cannon over here, these Plasma Guardsmen, the Bane Blade, I don't know how this thing's actually going to push into all of this. It, it, it is one of the best tanks in the game, but it has to be able to get some damage out too and shut down some of this. Seas Marines putting some damage down. And then the Imperial Abyss opens up in the middle of the Imperial Guard forces, forcing a retreat of the infantry, leaving the two tanks stranded out here against the forces of chaos. Terminators getting knocked all over the place, down to just a scant few hundred points. Or a few over a hundred points, rather. The Tyranid coming in on the flank, shutting down the Lehman Rust tank, the Tyranna formation. Finishes off the tank. And now it is just the Bane Blade out here. The blue team wanted to hold, but they couldn't do it. The bunker gets obliterated, along with the Lehman Rust. The Bane Blade is now exposed without any support, which is the last thing you want for the most expensive tank in the game. The Bane Blade is a terrifying unit, but not when it's facing two armies all on its own. It's even turned around and exposed its rear armor. It's big and it's mean, but it is slow. It's down to about half health. Galuko is going to lose his Bane Blade. The massive super tank goes down. The Great Unclean One, I thought it was going to just get shot down, but they proved me wrong. Another Lehman Rust gets airdropped in. 
the Lord General can airdrop those via Valkyrie calling. The Red's moving up top. There's only a Plasma Devastator over here to stop them. There's, oh, no, I lied. There's two squads of Terminators and a Plasma Devastator. That's a whole different animal. No, no fear gets activated. There's some Plasma here, but there's no Plasma on the Tech Marine. Even using the high-powered shot, realizing uh, it's not terribly effective against these Terminators. Meanwhile, down bottom, the Great Unclean One continues pushing forward into the Imperial Guard ranks. Both the IG are trying their damnedest to hold this down, but with only 54 points remaining for the Reds, they have to do something against this. It doesn't look like Echo Tech has what he needs to stop the Terminators. Can the Reds hold this bottom point uh, effectively for the rest of this game? Because up top, it's looking pretty dire. Kasuga is down to just the Bane Wolf. He's lost literally everything else. Now getting out a second Lehman Rest tank. The Imperial Guard, when they get to this point that they just start losing all their infantry and throwing everything away, like their Imperial Guard vehicles are amazing, but without the support of those combined arms, they're just gonna get pushed back. All, all it takes now is just some hard anti-vehicle. And look, you see, the already taken big hits from the Noise Marines and the, uh, the Plague Boys. This Lehman Rust tank down to about half its health already. The Noise Marines will finally get shoved off here. The Guardsmen and Lord General, or sorry, the Kazarkins and Lord General, rather, managing to put down some big hurt. Oh my gosh, two Plague Marines make short work of the Lehman Rust tank. That was kind of uh, Kasuga, or sorry, Paluka's last, uh, last stand here. He's got some great, great range firepower, but without those vehicles... It's going to be very difficult for anything to get done. Here come the Tyranid forces looking to rip apart some tactical marines. Shotgun blast knocks them down. Oh my gosh, it's brutal. A squad of gene stealers goes down. There's still only one left along with some warriors. Crisis never managing to get something like a Carnifex or anything like that onto the field. 35 points for the Reds. Oh my gosh. What are they going to do about these Tyranids? Or sorry, the, the, these Terminators. There's too many T words. Terminators, Tyranids, and tanks. Who's gonna win? Now Lehman Rust moves forward 192 to 32 at the moment. But the red team is doing a good job of keeping those victory points decapped, buying time, trying to get it together. Jafari actually has a formidable army. And Echo Tex isn't bad, but it's very singularly purposed. It's just tax and terminators. It's just an, a, a big attack move army, and they don't have really any 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 answer to this Lehman Rust tank or the Bane Wolf, which is uh, I mean this this might be the longest surviving Bane Wolf I've ever seen. So the generator is online. Very impressive that that's still on the field, but uh. Also a bit of a blunder for the Reds to just not get more hard anti-vehicle and prevent this from pushing forward. Granted, now that there's two Terminators out with Cyclone missile launchers, I'm not sure what you would expect to get done with any sort of setup team. Look at this point-blank Cyclone barrage. Not crazy effective, but does chunk off a nice bit of health from those Terminators when it's just a Terminator on Terminator fight and a bunch of piercing damage. Uh, it actually works out quite nicely that uh, neither Terminator squad can really punish the other. The VPs are ticking down. 12 points remain and the Chaos Lord is going for the cap. Can he shut it down or is this game done and out? Three squads of Plague Marines now. Jafari recognizes them like, all right, if you guys aren't gonna build anti-vehicle, I'm gonna build all of it. Three squads of Plague Marines making sure it work. I may have spoken too soon about that Bane Wolf because it finally goes down. The Lehman Rust tank can't hold well against this at all. Lord General trying to get the cap in. And uh, it looks like Apothecary again versus the Tech Marine up north. Two squads of Cyclone Rocket Launcher Terminators, but I think they already used their barrage, so it's not actually able to do much up here. The Lord General gets pushed off the point, and then the Tyranids claim it. Lehman Rust goes out of control. This could be a rocket barrage on the Plague Marines, but Plague Marines are notoriously difficult to take out, but the Ravner was not so fortunate. Oh my gosh, Plague Marines just don't even care. They don't care. They're level four Plague Marines. You can't kill them with a rocket barrage. Away. 192 to five. 
And it looks like the red team has managed to hold strong. Five points remain. Echotex taking control of the north side. The Plague Marines are forced off finally, but it's a triple cap quickly turned against the Blues. Kasuga, Jemeris, and Peluku. Peluko? I keep saying Peluku. <laughs> Peluko. Not Peluku. Terminators are here, but they don't have an answer for the Vendred. They teleport out. A lot of anti... Uh, now, I guess it's now the blue team up north that's having trouble with anti-vehicle. A new Lehman Rust tank comes out. Not sure that that's a, that's a great choice against Triple Plague Marine. There's a Lictor over here looking to gobble up. Why can't he, he can't seem to attack this Plasma Devastator? I don't know what's going on there, but if the Lictor goes down. Something weird happened there. I feel bad about that one. But look at this Executioner just blasting away at these attacks and Terminators. Does big damage. Yeah, Crisis Calling Out. I like these bugs. He's not talking about his Tyranids, I tell you that much. What is this Dreadnought doing? It's just standing there. Now it's charging forward into this? I don't think that's the right move. 96 to 5. Pergatus comes down. The Ring of Fire does damage. Takes out the Ravner. Stuns a whole lot else as well. Pergatus is so cool. How is this Dreadnought still alive? Imperial Abyss opens up again! This cap is not happening. Everything's dying. Heavy turret, more Lehman Rust tanks coming out onto the field. And a Neurothrope as well. I, I I think I think you need some strong anti inf like this is where uh what is it? Where did the the Kazakins, right? We want more Kazakins instead of more Lehman Rust tanks, is that correct? Kadich and Devils coming out? I I think Kadich and Devils are a little too short range for this kind of stage of the game. Big, nasty, great, and clean one continuing to just be a damaged sponge. Chaos Predator now out on the field as well, but Kasuga has nothing left. Overtly, Gemrus has the Terminators, but uh, it's starting to get to the point where Terminators alone aren't enough. And of course, the, uh, yeah, the, the Cataclysm over here, and whatever the, whatever the other, the, uh, what, it's Cataclysm and Neuro something. I don't know. He's got a bunch of wacky abilities, but one of them is a percent damage ability, and it just melts down Terminators. Paroxysm, I think? I don't remember which is which. One is a life drain ability, and one is a blast. See, there's the blast. Doesn't do a lot of damage. But the big AoE circle is, is the health drain, and that's huge. Oh my gosh, is this another rocket run? This could be big. It connects really hard. Takes out the Raveners. Knocks the Reds completely off the point. Everything else survives there. Everything is just getting too tanky. The Inquisitor's up here. Level 9 with a whole bunch of great war gear. But Kasuga just doesn't have... Doesn't have an army anymore. It has two squads of Katachins. The Reds are holding strong. They're doing everything they can to make sure this point doesn't cap. Because if the point caps, the game is over. With only five points remaining, you don't even have time to immediately recap the point. So they need to they, they need to stop it. End of story. The blue team is here with the Catechins. 
The Neurothrope continuing to just knock everything back and deny the caps as much as it can. But it's now out of energy. It can't do too much more at this stage. The red team... The cap goes down. But it gets neutralized just in time. The VPs change hands. Thanks to the forces... of Jafari. Everyone's just throwing everything away at the points. It's just such a massacre at this stage. Here comes the Cataclysm again. And this is where the Terminators start running out of health. Look at how fast this drains down. It's, it's percent based damage. So it does crazy damage to that high health pool of the Terminators. It looks like a squad might even be going down here. Indeed it does. To the level 9 Tech Marine of Echo Tech. And I think the Reds somehow managed to pull that out, just barely, by the end. We failed our mission. Congratulations to Echo Tech, Crisis, and Jafari. What a hell of a match. Oh my gosh. Uh, Gemerus and his allies, Kasuga and Peluko, they just couldn't get it together at the end. They threw away tank after tank to those Plague Marines. The triple Plague Marines of Jafari single-handedly bringing the Reds back into this. Uh, just barely in the nick of time, too. Five points remaining? Holy crap. Woo! What a run. Five-point game. Holy hell, that was a battle. And, uh, the, the, the battlefield is just nothing but craters at this point. We saw at least three rocket runs, a couple Imperial Abyss, more Terminators than you can shake a weird boy stick at. Woo! Jafari carried. Yeah, you, you might be right. Crisis got some excellent plays in there too, but by the end it had lost a lot of his troops. But uh, at the end, still having a Neurothrope and a Lictor on the field, so those are both uh, single entity high impact units, especially against that double Terminator that we were seeing up north. Very cool game. Thank you for uh, sending that in, Echo. That was a lot of fun. Very cool. I, I don't do many three on three games these days either, so it was pretty cool to actually actually do a three on three again I need to I need to get back into the threes a little bit because I know people love watching uh, they love watching the faction matches and stuff like that so 